welcome back to my channel. Today's video is all about used bassoons. Used bassoons that fall into the price range of $5,000 or less. This is a follow-up to my previous post which dealt largely with mass-marketed, readily available bassoons in the same price range. The major difference between the mass-marketed instruments versus the used bassoon is not only availability, it is also what the bassoons are made from. Mass-marketed instruments are largely made from either plastic or they are made from wood composite. By opening up a discussion on used instruments, we finally get to talk about bassoons that are made out of maple wood. Now, because they are made out of maple wood and they fall in the $5,000 or less category, rarely do they have lining in the joints and they usually will not also have lining in the tone holes. So this means that we will be discussing in detail moisture damage and how to avoid it so that you can set up your investment in purchasing an instrument for long-term success. My first step that I take when I am looking for a used bassoon in this price range is to learn as much about the owner history as possible. Once I've located an instrument, I want to know who the owner has been and if there have been previous owners. By digging into a discussion of ownership, usually you can find out if there has been any repair done to the bassoon. If there has been any repair, was it done by a service technician or was it done by a bassoon specialist and exactly what work was done? It's good to know this so that you have an awareness about if the bassoon has been adjusted from its original stance of when it was formed by the manufacturing company. The other bit that learning about the owner can help with is making sure that you have an understanding of if the instrument was played regularly or if the instrument has been in storage. If the instrument has been in storage, I want to know where it has been in storage. Is it been sitting in the back of a cool, damp closet or has it been sitting in an attic that has absolutely no climate control? All of these elements can help give you an understanding and a foundation of the background of the bassoon before you have ever gotten your hands on it. The next step I like to go through is when I physically have the instrument, I like to look it over. And when I say look it over, I mean I look it over in detail. The first thing I do is look at the bell. The bell oftentimes has a stamp on it that will give you the manufacturer. The manufacturer can give you an idea of when the instrument was modeled and also the serial number, which is located under the boot cap on the boot joint, can give you an indication of the time of manufacturing and that can give you a background when you know your bassoon history. If you're interested in learning more about bassoon history and brands that I like, I have a blog dedicated and linked to that and I will put that in the description box down below. The next bit that I like to look for when I am looking over the instrument is I want to make sure there isn't a lot of play in the keys, meaning that they are loose and they're going to need to be stretched in order to get a good fit. I also want to make sure that the pads that are underneath the keys are white leather. Sometimes repair technicians will try to cheat and use saxophone pads that are orange. The orange saxophone pads will never create a solid seal on a bassoon. And if you see those, you can guarantee that you will have the extra added cost of needing a pad replacement on the bassoon. The next step I like to go through is making sure that there aren't any visible cracks or any visible moisture damage. Moisture damage in some of these older instruments can happen not only in the wing joint where the fit will leak from the finger tone holes into the wood of the instrument, but it can also happen in the boot joint. So although I am not a bassoon repair technician, I do have a page dedicated on my website for repair technicians in the United States and Canada. I do like to just check and see some of the visible elements that might be readily visible to the eye so that uh, before I take the time to send it to a repair technician, I have checked to see if there was anything that raised any warning bells. While I have the boot cap off and I'm looking at the serial numbers, I also like to make sure there aren't any dents in the YouTube. I also like to look at where all of the joints fit together on the bassoon. Oftentimes those are prime places for cracks to develop. So I do look over the full instrument, but I am especially careful at where the instrument pieces fit together to double check that I do not see any visible cracks. Once I have an awareness of the bassoon and the manufacturing company, I like to go ahead and dig in with a little bit of history and research on the brand. 
Now, through my years of experience, I do have my favorite brands, which I list on the blog, and I also have some brands that I don't really care for. I'm choosing to focus on the brands that I adore, largely because the instruments that I have had tough times with are usually because the manufacturing was done poorly. Next up, I like to actually play the instrument. There is so much that be, can be gained from playing the instrument and learning how it blows, the response, and also how even the scale is. It's also a chance to identify if it is a match for your artistic integrity and your personal voice. So never underestimate the time that it takes to do an on-site play test to make sure that it matches your goals and your artistic intent. If you want to know more about how I actually play test an instrument, I do have a separate video on that and I will go ahead and link that so that you can go ahead and hear all of the elements that I do for every bassoon, regardless of price range, to test the instrument and make sure that I'm setting up a purchase and sale for success. The final step that I like to invest in is sending the bassoon to a specialized bassoon repair technician. Now, although this may seem like it's a bit extreme, for bassoons in the $5,000 or less category that oftentimes do not have lined finger holes, this is imperative. This is largely because the amount of detailed work a bassoon specialist is going to need to do to establish whether or not rot has started to begin in this instrument or not. A bassoon repair specialist will actually insert a magnifying glass and a flashlight underneath the joint. They will then drop a pin into the instrument and push the pin ever so gently into the areas around the tone holes looking for weak spots that could possibly be rot. They will do similar elements with removing the boot cap and then the U-tube to make sure that there is no rot in the boot of the instrument. If there's minimal rot, it can always be repaired, but you want to be aware of the financial elements that you are investing in when you purchase your bassoon. Okay guys, I hope you enjoyed this video on looking for bassoons and some of the testing and techniques that I do for instruments in the $5,000 or less category. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up. If you wanna make sure that you don't miss a future video and you're not already, you might consider subscribing. And if you wanna keep up on all of my bassoon adventures when I am testing new instruments and what I like and why, there is always Snapchat, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. And I will see you guys next time, bye. Thank you.